You recently published a very important article titled Advances in Cognitive Theory and Therapy, the Generic Cognitive Model. Can you describe what you and Emily Haig wrote about in this article? Yeah, so it would really be too long-winded, and I would recommend those of you who are really scholarly uh, and those of you who uh, have laboratories where you, you talk about uh, literature, uh, you might want to read it. It's coming, it's already come out, it's online um, with the uh, Annual Review of Clinical Psychology. So, first of all, I talked about, well, the basic of what I was trying to say there is there's one theory, but there are many therapies. And the one theory that I propose is something that is cognitively based. And it's an expansion of the original cognitive theory that I proposed back in the 1960s. But since then, the theory has been enriched by contributions from a wide variety of areas and disciplines. So the, the current theory does include the contribution of genetics to psychopathology and the contribution of social psychology and cognitive psychology and so on. And so the theory has grown, but the theory is still based on the understanding of individuals' problems or individuals' functioning. So from this broad theory, which is based largely on what kind of beliefs people have and how the beliefs influence how they feel and how they act, um, so within this corpus, you can then derive specific formulations <laughs> for every single problem there is, every single psychological, any problem that has some kind of psychological overlay. Then when you're treating an individual case, you can take the formulation derived from the theory, and then you can do an analysis of the case based on that. And uh, so that was one part of the article. The other part of the article has to do with the various strategies that you would use for a variety of the psychological problems that people have. So basically, that's in a, in a, in a nutshell. <coughs>